Okay, so let's have a look at an alternative way of placing cross breaks in a sheet metal part. So I have a series of cross breaks that I've placed in this section, this box section. And the usual tutorial would place these cross breaks as literally just a, a crosshair, but I've, I've pressed these into the part. So let's have a go putting these together. So here is my blank part. I've put together a series of drawing templates to help me place my cross breaks. So literally I've just put together some sketches on the surfaces that I want to place the breaks. And I've dimensioned the these templates to match the cross breaks that I'm about to build. So there's one. There's one on the side here. And then I've projected from this side onto the other side. And between the two, I should be able to place all my cross breaks. So let's have a go at building a cross break. So we're going to start a new part. And we're going to start by drawing on the top plane. And we're going to just draw a couple of boxes. So what we're doing here is we're going to put together a forming tool. So I'm just putting together the base of my forming tool. It's important that we get these dimensions matched up to the template we've just put together, or we've, I've just shown you on the main part. So I'm going to make have a little border of 2.5 mil. I need to find my outside dimension. T30 by say 185, 190, 190.5. Okay, so we're set. We've got a template sketch for this part. So let's exit this, rename it template sketch. Now I'm going to do an extrude from the top plane, but I'm only going to reference this sketch. So I'm going to do a convert entities and take the parts that I want. This, this basically helps me if I ever want to go back, I can just go back to the main template rather than into the individual sketches because they're all derived from the main template sketch. It's helpful on more complicated parts. This is going to be fairly simple. So, Extrude in the other direction, 2mm. It's going to be a small sheet. Okay, so now I need to start building the geometry for my, my actual pressing of my cross break. Let's just change the color. I always have to work in gray in this program, so I just actually trying to work in a different color. Okay, so we need to put in a 3D sketch next. So sketch. 3D sketch, and I'm going to use my template to place my central feature to dictate the height of my cross break. So let's build a shape. There we go. And I'm going to have this cross break breaking out by, let's say, 20 mil. Okay, so it's going to protrude 20 mil. This is going to be construction geometry. Okay, so I can now go into the surfacing. Oh, we need one more line. Yep, okay, now we're ready. Let's go into the surfaces toolbar, like so, and let's go field surface. It's so automatically selected the surface because we've closed it. There was only one sketch for it to select, really. Okay, so we have our first triangular section of our cross break, and we're now we can make the other side. It's easy, we can reference what we've already put together. 
bring that across. Exit the sketch. Surfaces again. Field surface. Okay, so two more triangles to go. We don't need to build any more 3D sketches. We can just run these off of the geometry we've got. So let's go planar surface. Select two lines. And we have filled the void. There's our triangle. Okay, last one. Planar surface again. Two lines. Okay, so we, we've got some solid geometry and we've got a surface, so I can show you what we have at the moment. So we've got a solid, the base, the top's just a bunch of surfaces. We need to make everything solid. So let's, let's offset this face by zero mil. And then we're going to hide it. So hide the face we've just produced. And then I want to delete that face that makes the base part solid. So we're going to get rid of that original face, just delete it off. And all we have now is surfaces. No solid geometry whatsoever. OK, so let's bring back that offset. Hide the base. Um, we need to trim it to see, but before we trim it, we need to knit the triangles we put together. So the knitting option, merge entities. Okay. Now trim surface, select the knit, select the part we want to get rid of. Press OK. Right, so all we've got now left is the outline of that offset we put together. We can bring back the base part, or what's left of it in surfaces. And then we can knit everything together. So knit the triangles, the offset, the rest of the base merge and try to form solid. So we can only form the solid when we have enough surfaces covered to basically create solid, solid geometry. So here we go. Here's the, um, here's the proof that we have a solid now. Everything's nicely knitted together. Okay. So now we need to turn this into a form tool. So into sheet metal, into forming tools, stopping face. So we need to select this face here. That's going to be our stop face. So that's basically where the tool is going to press. And um, everything above that surface is going to be pressed into the sheet metal part. But that's really the contact face between the press tool and the sheet metal. So we can change our insertion point, but we're going to leave it at the default. OK, so it's highlighted the stopping face and in yellow is everything that's going to be pressed as part of this forming tool. Right, so let's save this part. So file, save as, and we can go to forming tool. Or let's type in the name, so cross break tool first. And now we can go form tool, file option. And that takes us to a design library area. So there's a specific forming tool option area. So let's save it in this area, save. And then we can go to the library. We can when we're back in the main part. So let's go design library. Let's roll out the design library, click on forming tools, and here is our cross break we've just produced. So we need to know where we're going to put it. So we're going to put it on the inside. And here's our template, as I showed you before. So let's drop it in. 
There we go. Find our position, which was central. Click on the position. Click on something we need to link up to. Coincidence, mate. Bring the two bits together. Um, and we need to turn the part around so we can go rotate 90, flip it. In, flipping it's wrong. Flipping it's basically can make it internal. So let's make it external again, so we don't need to flip it. Just we need just just needed to turn it ninety degrees. Okay, so let's do it. Right, so here it is. So here's our form tool pressed. But I think I can see something not quite right here. So you notice it doesn't quite match up to the geometry I've placed. So. What we can do here, let's just check it. T30. Okay, so what we can do is we can go back into the form tool and we can edit it. So let's open up the design library, open the form tool, and let's go in and edit of course it's not it's not done from this sketch it's all derived from the template sketch the first sketch we put together so let's open that and let's add five mil to this part and let's save close so you think that this would automatically update, and sometimes it does in SolidWorks, but sometimes the links get a bit delayed. So I'm going to try. That's not replacing is not the right option. Let's just get rid of that. Um, let's just delete the cross break altogether and. Go back into the design library and just place another cross break in the same location. Now you can probably go in and replace it, but in the window that I just had open, um, I had it linked to part. If I'd switched it to form tool, the new form tool might have appeared, but I've just deleted and gone. Um, straight and placed another one. So you could you could play around with it, see if you can actually just replace one form tool with another. But I've just opted to delete and start again. And you can see now that the geometry matches up a lot a lot more nicely, a lot more cleanly to the template sketch I've put together. So let's place one more, one more cross break. Place this one again. We've got to turn it 90 degrees. Find the position. Coincidence, mate. Let's bring them together. So we've got the right location. That's OK. And there you go. There's, there's the second cross break. And that's how you. That's how you make a cross break as a form tool and um, and place it on your sheet metal part. Now if you flatten the part, there is one thing to remember when you do this, you do not flatten the cross break and that's kind of a rule in SolidWorks for any kind of form tool part or it is as far as the 2014 version of SolidWorks is concerned. So you need to, yeah, you need to consider whether you do actually want to flatten the part, but it's always going to be there. Now let's just place one, one more cross break just to show. So this time I didn't have to rotate it. So just proof that you don't have to change it every time. Depends on the orientation of where you're placing. I'm going to link to 
a different sketch, a side sketch this time. Let's place this one last cross break and then you can fill in the rest yourselves. So that's an alternative to creating a cross break.